Imagine you're walking home one night. It's late, there's no one else around. You walk and you walk until you see someone wearing a mask. A mask so creepy it makes your bones shiver. But before you can move, you feel a hot sting and the warm sensation of blood. You've just been attacked by a ghoul, and soon you'll be dinner. That's what all the residents of the world of Tokyo Ghoul have to worry about, except for the ghouls themselves. Hi, I'm Adrian the Cartoon Hangover, and tonight, sink your teeth into this lovely dinner we prepared. 107 Facts About Tokyo Ghoul the first chapter of Tokyo Ghoul premiered in Weekly Young Jump on September 8, 2011. Weekly Young Jump is a more adult, or seinen, sister publication of Shonen Jump. It's known for Gantz and Terraformars, among other manga. From the start, Tokyo Ghoul has been in gory company. Tokyo Ghoul was created by Sui Ishida, who, at the time of its first release, was a rookie manga author at 24 years old. The original Tokyo Ghoul manga ran for three years and was compiled into 14 volumes. Before we dive deep into the anime facts, let's go through a small history lesson. Sui Ishida started Tokyo Ghoul as a series of one-shots, one of which earned him second place in the weekly Young Jump 113th Grand Prix for up-and-coming manga authors. Before his career as a manga artist took off, Ishida worked as a tattoo artist. Maybe he should do official Tokyo Ghoul tats for fans. Ishida hadn't published any manga formally before his Tokyo Ghoul one-shots, but he had drawn a couple of webcomics. One of them was called, um, The Penis Man. However, it's no longer legally available on the internet. You can follow Sui Ishida on Twitter at Sotonami. Sotonami is the pen name he used when writing The Penis Man. He posts a lot of Tokyo Ghoul sketches that you won't see elsewhere, as well as fan art from other series. Seemingly outside of his two webcomics and his two Tokyo Ghoul manga, the only other work Ishida published was a 69-page official fan comic about Hunter x Hunter's Hisoka. Ishida actually illustrates Tokyo Ghoul digitally using a tablet and a variety of illustration programs, but I bet you couldn't tell just by looking at it. Manga artists normally have a team of assistants helping them ink, tone, and fill in the backgrounds of their works. That may seem like cheating, but realistically, there'd be no way for Ishida to publish a chapter of Tokyo Ghoul every week. His illustrations are so beautiful, it's no wonder Tokyo Ghoul is such a success. And that's not even getting to the writing. Recent numbers show that the manga has around 24 million copies in print. Despite the success of Tokyo Ghoul, it will not be released in China. It's actually completely banned in the country due to its graphic violence. Just one month after Tokyo Ghoul ended its original manga, run, its sequel comic, Tokyo Ghoul Re, debuted in the same magazine. The sequel is a direct continuation of Tokyo Ghoul, starting immediately after the last chapter. Tokyo Ghoul was so successful that it earned an anime adaptation that aired in July of 2014, which boosted its popularity on an international level. The series was animated by Studio Piero, a studio known for adapting big shonen shows. They're responsible for the anime of both Naruto and Bleach, and I'm sure 99% of you know what those are. The director, Shuhei Morita, had only directed a few shorts before directing Tokyo Ghoul. His biggest previous directorial work was way back in 2006 on a CG original video animation called Freedom. The writer, Chuji Mikasano, is only known for Tokyo Ghoul. It's pretty rare for a big title like Tokyo Ghoul to be handed off to people with less experience than others. But it does happen. The Tokyo Ghoul's anime's first season premiered when the manga only had seven volumes out. It's not unheard of, but that's not very much story to work from, especially given how fast Tokyo Ghoul's plot moves at times. When asked what left the biggest impact when working on Tokyo Ghoul, director Shuhei Morita stated, the Tokyo Tokyo Ghoul's schedule was rather tight, so while it was stressful, it was still rather exciting to work on. We didn't have much time to prepare because the manga was still being published. When asked to compare short films and TV anime, Morita expressed how much of a challenge it was to find his proper footing in directing an anime due to how differently the two formats were developed. Tokyo Ghoul's character designer, Kazuhiro Miwa, is also known for doing key animation and has worked on shows like Code Geass and Auraka 7 AO. According to Miwa, when you're reading a manga, you can pick an overall environment or great picture. Miwa said that he wanted to bring that bigger picture into the anime and give it some depth. Miwa was a fan of the series even before he was hired. He already owned some Tokyo Ghoul manga, so when they asked him to do character designs, he said, oh yes, I can do this. I wanted to work on a series that I could get attached to and make me excited to work on. Even then, it was still a rather stressful role to fulfill, physically and mentally. It seems like the team had a lot of creative freedom when working on Tokyo Ghoul. In the same interview, Miwa said that the mangaka, which is Japanese for manga Arthur, Sui-san, let us do whatever we needed to do. Most of the time, the mangaka would be very specific on how they wanted things, but this wasn't the same for them. Yutaka Yamada, who had previously worked on the music for the live-action Death Note film, handled the music for Tokyo Ghoul. It's clear that Yamada did a great job, as the music is one of the anime's most notable characteristics. And in the comments down below, don't you agree that that one track sounded like O Fortuna? And if you don't know what that is, go search it up. The soundtrack for Tokyo Ghoul is distinctive in that it uses a wide variety of styles, from choir vocals to soft piano lines and even some funky guitar jams. The variety of the songs and how well they're edited adds a lot to the anime's atmosphere. Of course, we can't talk about Tokyo Ghoul's music without mentioning the killer opening. Unravel was written by
by TK, who is the vocalist and guitarist of the band Rin Toshite Shigure. Known for their wild vocals and intricate guitar riffs, the band previously contributed songs to every incarnation of Psychopaths as well as Ninja Slayer. TK was actually personally asked by Tokyo Ghoul's author to do the theme song for the anime. Ishida must be a really big fan. When creating the song specifically with Tokyo Ghoul in mind, TK said that he was inspired by how beautifully the concept of life was portrayed alongside the grotesqueness of the ghouls. He felt that if he focused on the dichotomy, he would be able to capture the words for Unravel. The band People in the Box performed the ending theme for Tokyo Ghoul called Saints. They haven't contributed music to any other anime series, so consider Tokyo Ghoul their anime career debut. If you made it this far into the video without really knowing what Tokyo Ghoul is, we applaud you. Tokyo Ghoul is the story of a college boy, Ken Kaneki, who almost gets crushed to death by a falling building after a date with a girl named Rize. When he wakes up, he discovers that he's become a ghoul, which are man-eating individuals. One of the biggest challenges a ghoul needs to face is having to eat human food. It gives them no nutritional value and tastes extremely bad, but it's a great way to keep up appearances in front of human friends and the human society. This is actually played up a few times in the series. For instance, when Tokyo struggles to eat the food her best friend cooks for her. Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't end that well. The Tokyo Ghoul one-shot was very different to what was finally published and what was aired. One of the biggest differences is that Ken Kaneki starts off as a full-blown ghoul as opposed to a human ghoul hybrid. The Toka found in the one-shot serves as the inspiration for Toka Kirishima as well as Rise Kamishiro. She's a waitress in the one-shot, just like the manga and the anime, but she also has the binge-eating habits of Rize. Lastly, Shinohara, Amon's past instructor, was originally conceived as an antagonist similar to Mado in the main series. Tsukiyama, the first true antagonist of the first season, was actually going to be a character in another one of Ishida's works. This was revealed in the art book Tokyo Ghoul Zaki. Most of the ghouls wear masks, not all the time as that would be too suspicious, but they do especially when they're hunting or when they're traveling at night. It's to help keep their regular human faces unrecognizable to the ghoul police. And yes, the ghoul police, otherwise known as the CCG. The CCG has cute nicknames for many of the prominent ghouls, oftentimes based on their masks. Kaneki is referred to as Eye Patch, Tsukiyama as the Gourmet, and there's others like Rabbit, Raven, and the One-Eyed Owl. The big bad of the first season, Yakumo Omori, was nicknamed Jason. If the mask wasn't a clear enough hint, the mask nickname combo is a clear reference to the classic horror franchise, Friday the 13th. Though that Jason wasn't known for eating people, just killing them. And if the allusions to Jason weren't already obvious enough, the Jason of Tokyo Ghoul was known for his quote-unquote work in the 13th Ward of Tokyo, referencing the 13 in Friday the 13th. Speaking of wards, each of the wards in the anime represents one of the special wards of Tokyo, except for the 24th Ward. Wards 1 through 23 represent Chiyoda, Chuo, Minato, Shinjuku, Unkyo, Taito, Sumida, Koto, Shinagawa, Meguro, Ota, Setagaya, Shibuya, Nakano, Suginami, Toshima, Kita, Arakawa, Itabashi, Nerima, Adachi, Katsushika, and Edogawa, respectively. The 24th ward found in the anime and manga is completely fictional and doesn't have a parallel to real life Tokyo. The whitening of Kaneki's hair later in the first season was due to the torture he received from Jason. This whitening is named the Marie Antoinette Syndrome and refers to how Marie Antoinette's hair allegedly turned white several times after her capture during the French Revolution. Many fans of the series realize that Kaneki has repeatedly been associated with the number 12. This association is connected to the Hanged Man Tarot card, which is the 12th tarot card and a symbol of inner conflict and indecision. While most of the same events in the manga still occur in the anime, the chronology of events in the anime differed from the manga. One instance is the fight against Shu Tsukumiya. In the manga, Kaneki doesn't meet with Tsukumiya until after the problems with Hinami's family occur. Also in the manga, Hinami's father was already dead, whereas the anime allows us to see her father up until his death. Jason isn't introduced until much later in the manga. However, the anime gave him a slightly expanded role. He's introduced much earlier in the series and is even shown interacting with Hinami's father. Ken was trained by Toka at first and it shows in several manga scenes, but then was trained by Yomo later on. However, the anime omitted several key interactions that involved training, leading to Ken's fighting skills developing extremely quickly. While the first season of Tokyo Ghoul is a fairly faithful adaptation, Tokyo Ghoul Root 8 presents an alternate take on the second half of the original manga. It's not completely different, like Full Metal Alchemist famously was, but it's been changed enough to make Tokyo Ghoul Root A its own work. Sui Ishida conceptualized the story changes between the manga and Tokyo Ghoul Root A himself. Several concepts and ideas found in Tokyo Ghoul Root A were taken from Ishida's original ideas in the Tokyo Ghoul one-shots. The same core team involved in the first season of Tokyo Ghoul and Studio Piero returned for the sequel season. While originally leaked to be 24 episodes in total, Ishida updated his fans on Twitter stating that the season would only be 12 episodes in length. Tokyo Ghoul Root A started airing in the winter 2014-2015 anime season, just a few months after the original finished. Root A adds more focus on Amon and the CCG, but also cuts the amount of screen time Kaneki gets. However, the manga keeps generally the same amount of focus on Kaneki, but also adds to the amount of focus the CCG is given. Whereas Root A placed Kaneki
Kaneki alongside Aogiri Tree, the manga differed. Canonically, Kaneki is working against Aogiri Tree, forming a group of ghouls that work as his subordinates. Circling back to the anime, a newly formed band at the time of Tokyo Ghoul Route A's release, Osterike, performed the opening song Muno, or for your English-speaking fans, Incompetence. The ending song of Route A, Kisetsu wa Tsugi Tsugi Shindeku, or Seasons Dying One After Another in English, was done by Amazarashi. We're not joking when we say we play this 100 times since watching Tokyo Ghoul. It's addictive like human flesh. In return for their work on Tokyo Ghoul, Sui Ishida appeared in the Amazarashi music video, handwriting some very personal notes. It's likely that, like TK from Rin Toshite Shigure, Ishida was a fan and personally asked Amazarashi to do the ending of Tokyo Ghoul Route A. Tokyo Ghoul contains a number of references to Franz Kafka's classical story, Metamorphosis, written way back in the year 1915. If you're not familiar with the book, it's about a man who wakes up one day as a giant repulsive insect creature. Another literary easter egg, although completely fictional, relates to the book both Ken and Rize mutually enjoy, Sen Takatsuki's The Black Goat's Egg. The Black Goat is representative of Rize as she's a ghoul and has a gluttonous appetite for humans, similar to the Black Goat, while Ken is represented by the child of the Black Goat. Ken having Rize's organs and turning into a ghoul can be symbolic of Ken being Rize's child. In chapter 95, Kaneki pulls out a book titled The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. The story behind the book is about a fisherman's struggles trying to catch fish. It reflects what's happening in that particular arc in the manga, where Kaneki struggles to find answers to some of his questions. In chapter 124 of the manga, Kaneki can be seen reading the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. The screw tape letters has a demon for the protagonist who turns into a giant centipede towards the end of the book. The deal Jason makes with Kaneki didn't involve his two subordinates. Originally, the deal was to save either a mother or a child. In the anime, Jason tells Kaneki to decide whether to save a man or a woman, both of which who love each other. These characters are anime original characters and don't appear in the manga. In celebration of its fifth anniversary, Sui Ishida created the chapter Tragedy. I think it would be more appropriate to say recreated since tragedy is actually a recreation of the very first chapter of Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul Anime was an art book that featured production art for the Tokyo Ghoul Anime series. It featured concept art, omakes, and artwork from Sui Ishida himself. While that might sound nice and all, in addition to all of that, Tokyo Ghoul Anime also contained the original draft of the Root A anime series. Tokyo Ghoul Jack, created by Sui Ishida himself, served as a prequel manga series to Tokyo Ghoul. It contained seven chapters and focused on the character Kisho Arima. There was a Tokyo Ghoul themed card deck released featuring the cast of the series. It was originally a prize given to individuals that purchased the first two volumes of Tokyo Ghoul Re. In total, there were 10,000 decks produced and is currently exclusive to contests. A game titled Tokyo Ghoul Jail was released on October 1, 2015 and was published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. It followed the ghoul Ryo on his search for the true culprit behind the jail incident. Sui Ishida actually created the character Ryo just for the game, but of course that doesn't make the game canon in any way. Just because the creator did it, doesn't mean it's canon. Circling back to the card game, there was a special jail edition of Tokyo Ghoul Trump release, which featured three characters from Tokyo Ghoul Jail. Smaller smartphone games based on the Tokyo Ghoul series were released as well. Tokyo Ghoul Carnival was released in 2015 and allowed players to explore Tokyo and create their very own dream team of ghouls and CCG officers. An updated version titled Tokyo Ghoul Carnival Color was released years later. Tokyo Ghoul Re Invoke was released in 2017 and, like Tokyo Ghoul Carnival, also allowed players to create teams of ghouls and experience the story of Tokyo Ghoul. And lastly, on the top of games, Tokyo Ghoul The Fool was announced on April 1, 2013, and was set for release on the P2P. And if you weren't gullible, you would realize that this was an April Fool's joke set by Sui Ishida. The announcement was even complete with game screenshots and box art. The Tokyo Ghoul soundtrack was officially released on March 25, 2015, and contained a total of 53 tracks for your listening pleasure. Both Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Root A were licensed and released by anime monolith Funimation Entertainment in the United States. In the States, Funimation released both a standard and collector's edition of Tokyo Ghoul that came with a poster, a 60-page art book, and some other goodies. Not many anime get the collector edition released in the US, so this is a pretty big deal for the fans. Tokyo Ghoul has proved to be very popular among the fans. A live action adaptation is scheduled for release in summer 2017. The live action movie's world premiere wasn't in Japan where Tokyo Ghoul originated. Instead, its very first public screening was at the 2017 Anime Expo in Los Angeles. Truly, Tokyo Ghoul's popularity is pretty international. Ken Kaneki is played by actor Masataka Kubota. He previously played Akira Kiyosato in the 2012 adaptation of Rurouni Kenshin. Opposite Kubota, 
Kubota in the main cast is actress Fumika Shimizu as Toka Kirishima. Shimizu's had experience playing Yuki Jojima in the Kamen Rider films and TV series. All through July 2017 in Shinjuku, Tokyo, you can stop by the real life Anteku. This particular Tokyo Ghoul Cafe was opened as a movie promotion and serves coffee, sandwiches, and hopefully no human body parts. And again, like My Hero Academia, I regret not being in Japan at this time. Like, come on! This is so cool! I was there just like four months ago. The Shinjuku Anteku isn't the first Tokyo Ghoul Cafe to open. This past June 2017 in Ikebukuro, a general Tokyo Ghoul Cafe opened for a limited run. Here you can feast on the more ghoulish treats like Kaneki's one-eyed curry and Tsukiyama's eyeball cheese mousse. Mmm, scrumptious. There was also a Tokyo Ghoul exhibition in Shinjuku Station earlier in 2017. If you were lucky enough to swing by Shinjuku, you could see many of Sweet Ishida's gorgeous illustrations in person. Shinjuku Station is the busiest train station in the entire world, so we're assuming a ton of people saw it. Except for me. Tokyo Ghoul was the fourth best-selling manga in 2014 in Japan. It's been one of the top 10 selling manga every year since. Here in America, the first volume of Tokyo Ghoul has been on the New York Times bestseller list for 80 weeks and counting. It's currently the longest standing manga on the list, only the first volume of one Punch Man comes anywhere close at 71 weeks. Tokyo Ghoul is currently airing on Adult Swim's Toonami, joining the ranks of classic anime like Cowboy Bebop and Fooly Cooly. Tokyo Ghoul's been hovering between half a million and a million viewers each week on Toonami. Those are pretty big numbers as far as an anime televised viewership is concerned. Funko Pops also jumped on the Tokyo Ghoul train and has created both Kaneke and Toka as figures. We imagine you could find them at the local GameStop or Hot Topic or online. Of course, a number of top-notch Japanese figure makers have also released Tokyo Ghoul goods. Our favorite being Kotobukiya's Awakened Kaneki. The detail on it is fantastic. In addition to Funko Pops and hand sculpted figures, a ball jointed cast doll of Kaneki is also available for purchase. How much, you ask? About $1,400. Results of an official Tokyo Ghoul popularity poll show that Toka's the most popular character in the series. Who's your favorite? Comment down below and let us know. Neo, a long running UK anime magazine and website, voted Tokyo Ghoul Route A the best anime of 2016. We guess that they get their shows a little later than us, but we can't disagree with their pick. Tokyo Ghoul won Neo's 2015 pick as well. We've talked about Sweet Ishida a lot, but did you know there isn't a picture of him publicly available? Yes, the look of the creator of Tokyo Ghoul, a widely popular series, is relatively unknown. This isn't too absurd in the industry, as other artists, such as Abishi of Sword Art Online fame and Noisy Ito of Haruhi Suzumiya fame, have done the same. A number of Tokyo Ghoul light novels have been released, and surprisingly, they've been coming out in America as well. You can find Tokyo Ghoul Days, Void, and Past in your local Barnes & Noble, although a fourth book that came out at the end of 2016 has yet to be released in the US. A Tokyo Ghoul art book, chock full of gorgeous illustrations, was released in 2014 in Japan. The West isn't lucky enough to get English editions of every art book, even for popular works, but Viz Media will be releasing Tokyo Ghoul Zaki this November 2017. Unfortunately, there are two Tokyo Ghoul one-off OVA episodes that haven't been made available in America, not even for streaming. One of them is Tokyo Ghoul Jack. This OVA is based off of a prequel manga of the same name that was published in English, but so far only online. Tokyo Ghoul Pinto is the other OVA that wasn't released in the US. This one's based off of one of the stories in the novel Tokyo Ghoul Days. It covers some of Tsukimiya's backstory and was released on Christmas Day. The Tokyo Ghoul OVAs were animated by Studio Piero, but Shu Morita did not direct them. These OVAs have been released in the UK, Australia, France, Italy, everywhere but the United States. Oh, Come on, not even for streaming here? Like, what's the deal? In conjunction with the release of the OVAs, a limited time Tokyo Ghoul real escape game ran in Odaiba. That's where the life-size Gundam is or was, rather. It was called Tokyo Ghoul Deadly Escape and was hosted at the famous arcade, Joypolis. The most popular characters that cosplayers dress up as for events are, unsurprisingly, Ken Kaneki and Toka Kirishima. Seriously, have you all seen those cosplays? They're pretty awesome. Not uncommon for popular anime and manga series, Tokyo Ghoul has received a number of stage adaptations as well. We're sure the performances are bone chilling, but we feel bad for whoever has to clean up all that fake blood. A deck building game based on Tokyo Ghoul and several other types of games for various anime is set to release in 2017. They come courtesy of board game company Shinobi 7. Of course, if that's enough, you can also buy a Ken Kaneki Dakimakura. What are those, you ask? They're those giant, obnoxious, totally awesome hug pillows you see at cons and on Twitter. And they're not lame, okay? Besides, if you watch Tokyo Ghoul, you know that Kaneki is in desperate need of a hug. A couple years ago, just after the release of Season 2, a pair of high-end shoes inspired by Tokyo Ghoul dropped for $130 a piece. They look incredible, but unfortunately, they're long off the market. As the millennials would say, the Kaneki shoes are, uh, on fleek? 
Tokyo Ghoul even collaborated with a job hunting website called WebAnn. Wanted ads were posted by the CCG looking for new investigators. We're not sure how many people applied, but we hope that there's some sort of disclaimer about the chance of death on the job. Rumors of the season 3 have circulated a number of times, but have never been confirmed. Several times, officials have had to come out and say that the rumors weren't true. At present time, there are no announcements planned for Tokyo Ghoul season 3. Trust me, we're waiting with bated breath. And that's it for 107 facts on Tokyo Ghoul. What's your favorite character? Any ghoulie facts we missed out on? Let us know in the comments below. If you want us to cover any more of your favorite anime series, let us know. Subscribe to Cartoon Hangover, and don't forget to click that notification squad so you don't miss out on any of our anime goodness. And thank you for sharing your Cartoon Hangover with us.